the biologists who followed in his footsteps, even up to now, have only expanded out a fraction of what he had to say you know, he was very interested in sexual selection now, one of the things about human beings that's unique is that human females are picky maters they're choosy uh, they're also sneaky, because you can't tell when they're ovulating and with many other female animals you know so they have hidden ovulation and they're choosy and they tend to choose men who are more successful in the dominance hierarchy well, there, there's a shock I mean, if you have a choice why not if you pick someone who's at the bottom of the competence hierarchy well, that's probably not going to work out very well for you and since women bear the burden of reproduction it's perfectly reasonable for them to search out someone who's going to be helpful so, productive fair, generous and you know when you think of a dominance hierarchy, you might think, well, it's the powerful guy, the aggressive guy, say, that rises to the top of the dominance hierarchy, and that's not true it's not even true among chimps like, you can get a chimp tyrant but, then what happens is other chimps gang up on him and tear him to pieces and they don't do it nicely they don't do it nicely and the chimps that tend to maintain their dominance for long periods of time have a pretty wide network of friends, roughly speaking with whom they engage in reciprocal interactions, like grooming and they actually pay a lot of positive attention to the female chimps, who have their own hierarchy by the way and to the, their offspring so they're like baby kissing politicians and so, the idea that it's raw power that produces dominance is a, it's a just wrong it's, it's wrong now, you know, tyrants, you know it's a pretty damn up unstable business being a tyrant there's lots of people who want to kill you plus, you know, you tend to rule over something approximating hell so, maybe that's worse better than being a subject in hell, but it's not much better so, anyway, so this social, social now, so, what this means, think about this for a minute so imagine, you know, imagine that what I'm telling you bears some vague resemblance to the truth I, I think there's quite a lot of evidence for it from a, from a biological perspective um, I mean, this choosy mating thing occurs with lots of species, you know there's this bird called the bower bird you gotta look up bower birds, man, those things are you just can't even believe they exist and so, the male bower bird he makes this really complicated nest that's close to the ground he weaves it, it's really quite nice you couldn't make one so, and then he sweeps the, the, the yard in front of the nest and then he runs around the forest, or flies, because he is a bird finding pretty things so, maybe he'll find a nice collection of red leaves and so, then he'll take the red leaves one by one and fly back to his front yard and make a little square you know, he's a bird, so it's not a great square but, he makes a little patch of red and he takes a look at that and then he goes off and finds something blue and and he decorates, he makes a little piece of abstract art in the front of his nest and a lot of male bowerbirds do this all at the same time and so then the females come along, they hop on something nearby and they kind of look at it like this, checking it out and if they're happy with it, well then things proceed but if they're not, they fly off to someone else's piece of abstract art and if a, a male piece of art is rejected by like three females in a row he gets irritated and brushes it all off with his wing, and then he makes another one it's like, God well, they obviously have a sense of, very well developed sense of beauty it's so cool, you know and, I guess the idea is that who knows what the hell the idea is the female birds like artistic males, something like that but, if you're thinking about it biologically maybe it's an indication of intelligence right, it's a marker of intelligence you know, and it's certainly the case that female humans prefer creative men so, and no wonder, of course we wouldn't be creative if that wasn't the case so then imagine that there's two primary forces of evolutionary selection operating on us and they're not really the natural world which is what people always think like the environment, you know the, the animals and the trees and the nature but it isn't nature that's selected us it's two other things, well partly it's two other things so, one is, the dominance hierarchy, the male dominance hierarchy is one of the primary mechanisms of selection so, it's like, well, women are faced with a hard choice which guy to go after, right, that's a hard choice well, so, they do the same thing that people do with the stock market they outsource the cognitive problem, the computational problem to the male dominance hierarchy 
then they just let the males sort themselves out, however they're going to, and then they peel from the top. And so what that means is the dominance, male dominance hierarchy itself is a selection mechanism. Because if you fail at it, then you don't leave any offspring. And so what that means, at least in part, is that we have adapted to be better and better at attaining status in dominance hierarchies over God only knows how long a period of time. And that doesn't mean just power. You know, it might mean cognitive flexibility, because you could imagine dominance hierarchy A, dominance hierarchy B, dominance hierarchy C. Okay, so if like if you're really successful, you climb up dominance hierarchy A. Right, but you B and C, no, if you happen to land in those, you'd just be a failure. So then you could say. The ideal human being is someone who can climb to the top of a dominance hierarchy, no matter what the dominance hierarchy is. Right. So, we've evolved to... We've evolved such that success across the set of possible dominance hierarchies is the target. And I think that's why we have general intelligence. Because general intelligence is a general problem-solving mechanism. And it's a single factor even, like there is, intelligence is a single factor it's, it's not divisible, despite what people like Robert Sternberg and Howard Gardner falsely claim so, and then from the female perspective females are the next gatekeeper and that's why they're often mother nature, it took me a long time to figure this out, why the hell is nature feminine? in mythological representations, it's very, very, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily common, mother nature you don't think of father nature, you think of mother nature it's like, why? well, nature brings forth new forms, so that's feminine and nature selects, in fact, that's the definition of nature, from a Darwinian perspective nature is that which selects, women select, their nature and that's partly why far more men than you might think, like far more, are terrified of women. Because to be rejected as a romantic partner by a woman is to be classified as vaguely acceptable life form. Huh. No value in propagating it, though. Right, so it's a major, major rejection. And, you know, I've had dozens of clients and many, many people write to me whose primary problem is that they're so terrified of women they can't even approach them. Very, very, very common. So, all right. 